video of this lecture, we want to briefly address some material from Dominant Foot that we skipped over. So what I want to tell you is that not every principal ideal domain is a Euclidean domain. That we've seen that every Euclidean domain is a principal ideal domain, but it's not true that these two sets are equal. And how do you show that? Well, you should give an example of a principal ideal domain that is not a Euclidean domain. So I'll give you this example. But before I start, I want to emphasize that the material of this video is not something that you would ever be tested on in this course or on the qualifying exam. It's interesting stuff to know because you should recognize that these two concepts are not exactly the same thing. Uh, but the examples are a little tricky to get into and the stuff that is used to show that this example works, uh, these are not concepts that will come back later in the 206 sequence. All right, so having said that, let's say that R is this ring, Z adjoin one plus square root of negative 19 over two. Uh, note that negative 19 is congruent to one mod four. This is one of the quadratic rings that we introduced in section 7.1. This ring, is a PID, but it is not a Euclidean domain. So we'll see this in two parts. First, we'll see that it's not a Euclidean domain. And that is dealt with at the very end of section 8.1 of dominant foot pages 276 to 277. And this uses the concept of what's called a universal side divisor. So what is that? If R is an integral domain, let's say R tilde is gonna be all the units in R together with zero. An element in R minus R tilde, so non-zero element that's not a unit, is called a universal side divisor. If for every element X in the ring, there is some Z in this set of units together with zero, such that U divides X minus Z in the ring. So this is like a little bit of a tricky concept at first. I would recommend you think about what happens, uh, I don't know, in an example like Z, or F bracket X. So why did I pick those two examples? Because proposition five in section 8.1 says that if R is an integral domain that is not a field, if it's Euclidean, if it's a Euclidean domain, then there are universal side divisors in R. Okay, so like Z is a Euclidean domain that's not a field. Uh, it has to have universal side divisors. F bracket X is a Euclidean domain that's not a field. It has to have universal side divisors. So this proposition is not hard to prove, but I don't want to do the proof because it's not something that we'll need going forward. All right, so now how do we show that Z adjoin one plus square root of negative 19 over two is not a Euclidean domain? By showing that it has no universal side divisors. And uh, you can read the details in dominant foot, but what I'll say is that, okay, so in order to show that it doesn't have any universal side divisors, the first step is just to compute what is this set R tilde. And you can use the field norm uh, on, or the, the norm that we defined for quadratic rings, which remember for uh, when D is congruent to one mod four, the norm of A plus B times one plus square root of negative 19 over two is gonna be a squared plus a b plus one minus minus 19 over four times b squared. So it doesn't matter exactly. Uh, but you can use the norm to first see that the only units in this ring are plus or minus one. So this set r tilde here is just plus or minus one and zero. So, OK, so what's the idea? The idea is that we need some way to show that something is not a Euclidean domain. So far, the examples of things that we've seen in the textbook that are not Euclidean domains are not Euclidean domains because they're not PIDs. So we need this way to show that something that maybe even it is a PID, but it has, uh, it's missing some property that a Euclidean domain needs to have. So that's where these universal side divisors come in. This is a good example to know, but uh, it's not coming back. OK, so now I'm going to pause and erase, and I'll tell you the other part of this. So we've seen that R is not a Euclidean domain. Now we have to see that R is 
a PID. To complete this claim that Z adjoin one plus square root of negative 19 over two is a PID, but is not a Euclidean domain, we have to do the second part to say that it actually is a PID. So that's covered at the end of section 8.2 of Dominant Foot, pages 281 to 282. And the idea uses what's called a dedekind hasse norm on a ring R. So a positive norm N on R is a dedekind hasse norm if for every non-zero A and B in the ring, either A is in the ideal generated by B or there exist two elements S and T in the ring where uh, you have some element S times A minus T times B, some element in the ideal generated by A and B that has norm less than the norm of B. So non-zero element with norm less than the norm of B. Okay, why is this relevant? Because proposition nine in section 8.2 says that an integral domain R is a PID if and only if R has a dedekind Hasse norm. So this is not so hard to prove, but I don't wanna do the proof because it's not something you would be tested on and it's not something that is gonna come back later in this course. So the last thing that Dummett and Foote do to show that R is a PID is to say that Z adjoin one plus square root of negative 19 over two has a Dedekind Hasse norm. And they show that by giving you one, which is the norm that is the norm on the quadratic ring that we defined in section 7.1, the one that comes from the field norm in Q adjoined square root of negative 19. So concretely norm of A plus B times one plus square root of negative 19 over two is A squared plus AB plus five B squared. So this is a Dedekind Hasse norm. You can check that that's true. And that shows that this ring is a PID. We've already seen that it is not a Euclidean domain. All right, so there's one more small issue uh, related to an example that I think you should be aware that it exam this example exists, but it's not something that, I th that you'll ever be tested on in this class or on the qualifying exam. So I'll pause and erase and talk about that final kind of special example. I wanna mention one final example that I think you should be aware of, but is not something that you'll be tested on in this class or the qualifying exam, and is not something that'll come back later in this course. So we showed that Z adjoin I is a Euclidean domain. And we showed that by saying that the norm function A plus B I equals A squared plus B squared satisfies the things that you need in order to see that this is a Euclidean domain. This norm function comes from the field norm, the norm on Q adjoin I. This is like the norm that we defined on this quadratic ring in section 7.1. Okay, so we saw another example in this video that Z adjoin one plus square root of negative 19 over two is not a Euclidean domain not with this norm that comes from the field norm and not with any norm. Like it just isn't a Euclidean domain because it doesn't have any universal side divisors. So the example that I wanna mention is that Z adjoined square root of 14 is a Euclidean domain. But if you take the norm that comes from the absolute value of the field norm, that is norm of A plus B square root of 14 is absolute value of A squared minus 14 B squared this minus, remember what you get is a squared minus d b squared. So when d is positive, you get a minus here. Here d is negative, so you're getting this plus. So you need this absolute value to make sure that this norm takes uh, non-negative values at non-zero arguments. This norm does not show that this ring is a Euclidean domain. Like it's not, it's not Euclidean with respect to this norm. To show that it is a Euclidean domain, you have to define the right kind of other norm that comes from somewhere else. So this is not something that'll come back. Dumb and Foot mention it and they give a reference. So it's in the exercises in section 8.3, right after exercise nine on page 294, there's a reference to a paper that discusses this issue. So this is not something that even as a number theorist who cares about properties of quadratic rings, this is not something that uh, comes up often in my life, but it is um, a good example to be aware of.